This conference will now be recorded. All right. Good evening, everybody. It is now six o'clock on Tuesday, February 16th, 2021. And we'll call this council meeting to order. I'd like to acknowledge that we are on Treaty 1 territory and the traditional homeland of the Métis people. I would also like to remind all residents that our offices still remain closed to the public. And um, please contact our staff via phone or email with queries and utilize our e-service request form on our website. And due to COVID, some of our council COVID precautions, not COVID itself, some of our council members are attending the meeting remotely via GoToMeeting. So on the screen, we have Councillor Axworthy, Councillor Kumka, and Councillor Randall. Thank you, gentlemen, around the table. Councillor Bert Manovich. And Penny McMorris, Mayor. Thank you, everybody. So first item up, uh, be it resolved, the agenda be adopted as presented. May I have a mover? Mike, thank you. Second, Steve, thank you. Any additions to the agenda? Not hearing any. I do have, I just want to give an update on a Red River Basin Commission that I have. I can do that at the end. All right, all those in favor? All right. Carried, thank you. Next up, minutes which have been circulated to all members of council. We recall that the minutes of February 2nd, 2021 regular council meeting be adopted as presented. May I have a mover? Uh, well, I've got a lot of movers. I'll give this one to Erwin. Graham, can you second? Yes, I'll second it. Thank you. Any discussion? All those in favor? Aye. Carried. Thank you. We do not have any delegations, so we'll move on to committee reports. Mike, first up is Public Works. Well, Public Works. Um, thanks, Penny. This may come uh, be coming in a little bit late, but uh, as some of you may have realized that this week the garbage pickup was Tuesday due to the fact that uh, Monday was a statutory holiday. Uh, as always, water samples from the well at the fire hall and the Albert Beat pump house are being tested monthly throughout the winter. Public Works asks me to tell everyone that uses the public taps that the tap at the fire hall requires only a quarter turn, not a full turn. I guess we have a, we have a couple of muscle men out there uh, who have been turning the taps too far and uh, it's actually uh, uh, resulted in some damage to the taps and uh, uh, Public Works has had to replace the taps at both the fire hall and Albert Beach causing some service interruptions. So uh, so gently as you go, folks, please. Uh, a reminder for those coming out uh, in the winter. Uh, if it snows, we plow, and there are gonna be windrows. If you don't wanna be picking and chipping off the windrow at the end of your driveway yourself, please contact Public Works 48 hours before uh, you arrive and they will arrange to have your windrow removed from the end of your driveway. Preventative maintenance is going on. This uh, cold weather is extremely tough uh, on equipment and uh, they have been experiencing some ongoing uh, equipment problems due to the cold and uh, they're, keeping, uh, they're keeping young Dylan hopping uh, with, the, with the repairs and the, and the servicing. And as always, e-service uh, requests can be made on the RM of Victoria Beach webpage. If there's a service that you require uh, of Public Works, uh, your best bet is through an e-service request. This way your request is, is queued in a, in, a, in a formal process and there's a less chance that uh, requests uh, somehow sometimes fall behind the filing cabinet or accidentally get erased from the whiteboard. And that's it. Great, thank you. I know they've had some trouble. Is it mostly with the hydraulics on some of the bigger equipment? Uh, yeah, the hydraulics are, are anything that's, that's fluid driven is going to have a heck of a tough time. Or just get, even getting equipment started that may have been like some of the trucks they use outside. Thank you. Any questions for Public Works? Right. Thank you, Mike. Moving on to finance. Erwin. 
Today, we have not received the uh, December 31st year-end statement. Um, I, I checked last year and we, we, we got the financial statements in early March. So we're pretty consistent with last year. Obviously, there's a lot more work uh, to do a year-end and uh, we should have a report available for next month. Okay. Thank you. Uh, protective services. Steve, do you have fire? Uh, yeah, I do. Um, it's pretty straightforward, pretty easy. Uh, there is no report because there were no fires. Um, there were no issues at all. Um, the, um, the the they pretty much have everything that they need right now for uh, to uh, to work against COVID. There's still a little bit of training that needs to get done, um, as well as uh, just some odds and ends here and there. Um, and right now, it's really kind of how um, how does a fire uh, how, how do the fire crews ensure that they're that they're kept safe uh, when they respond to a call? Uh, so they'll be working on that training and uh, trying to figure out uh, how they proceed over the summer and the uh, in the coming months. Great. Thank you very much. Any questions? Steve, with COVID, were, was the fire department able to use uh, that virtual training program? Good question. Uh, I would have to look into it. Um, I'm not fully sure, so I'll, uh, I'll I'll ask and get back to you. I was just curious. Good question. Yeah. Thanks, Steve. Mike, please. Not quite as quiet as the fucker department, unfortunately. Uh, there were a total of 41 calls for service uh, in January, which uh, Chief Clark cites as a slight increase uh, from uh, from last January. Um, among the 41 calls included uh, four RCMP assists, um, three bylaw infractions, uh, there was one call to check on the well-being of a resident, there were five call-outs for COVID-19 uh, related issues, uh, there were five call-outs for under the Highway Traffic Act, uh, one medical call-out, uh, there was one Mental Health Act call-out, uh, one report of mischief, uh, two motor vehicle collisions that, uh, that our police uh, responded to. There were two calls under the ORV Act, uh, two uh, document servings. Uh, there were two call-outs to, due to sudden death by natural cause, one call-out for suspicious activity, and one general uh, uh, traffic call and uh, one call uh, regarding uh, weapons. Busy month. Busy month indeed. And all this cold weather, I thought people would be hunkered down, but I guess. Huh. Hunkering down does strange things to people. <laughs> uh, and just a, just a note that, uh, that uh, the police will be receiving money from the province uh, for, the, for the tags that our police uh, write up under the ORB Act under the uh, under the Highway Traffic Act and such, uh, total was over seven thousand dollars, and we're not sure yet what uh, what our uh, cut ah, okay. is on that. And uh, as soon as I know, uh, <laughs> I'll let council know. It probably won't be very big, but cross fingers. So that's any provincial offense notice. Exactly. Through the court system. So whatever is left after courts. Court costs and everything, that's what the municipality gets. If it's a PON. Right. Yeah. Okay. Any questions for police? No? Thank you. Moving on. Uh, special events. Oh, sorry, just, oh, uh, just real quick. Please. That's okay. Uh, just a quick comment, just to remind everybody that um, it doesn't matter uh, what time of day it is. If uh, you see anything suspicious or you think that you should call the uh, police, call them because uh, they're available 24-7. So um, they're a standard police force, one of the best in the province. So um, anytime, don't uh, don't worry about calling. 204-756-2322. Thanks, Steve. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, special events, obviously we don't have any special events going on right now, but I would like residents to know that we did receive uh, some family plaque requests. Those have been uh, those have been done and they're at my cottage and I will be putting them up on the 100th anniversary structure uh, when the weather warms up. 
and they are still available for purchase. This is an ongoing um, initiative. So if people want to add their family plaques to the, to the structure, uh, the forms are available online. Uh, golf course, back to Mike. Oddly enough, kind of quiet on the golf course, except for the shoo shoo shooing of, of, of skis. Uh, however, uh, I have spoken with Carl and uh, understanding that, that a current MOU uh, with, uh, with the ski folks uh, has expired. Uh, Carl uh, has accepted my invitation to, uh, to be involved in the changing of, uh, of uh, the MOU. But he's fine with them doing what they're doing now. As as they don't damage anything, yeah. he's yeah. fine with what they're and doing. And there's enough snow out there now. There, there is now, yeah. But uh, closer yeah. to spring, yeah. um, if there if there are tracks that, that cross a fairway or across a green or a tee box, I'm going to be concerned there because there can be some mm -hmm. from uh, from compacted snow. But uh, oh, as long as everybody is uh, is following the trails, and uh, I think we're going to be just fine. Yeah. And all the groomers are staying out of the tees and the greens. Mm -hmm. and... Yeah. And they're doing a great job because uh, all, I, all I'm hearing is just awful reviews yeah. Yeah. Uh, of the cross country in, uh, in, uh, in BB. Yeah, it's very popular. Good, it's good. Okay, thank you. Municipal buildings, buildings, Mr. Randall. Hello. Um, well, it's it's traditional at this time of year that there's not a lot of activity where municipal buildings are concerned and the uh, temperatures haven't helped, uh, neither does COVID. Um, my, my report uh, uh, really just follows through on my uh, my last report where I listed out the, uh, the items that I'm pursuing, talking to contractors, prospective bidders, uh, getting uh, ideas that we can bring to tender. And um, in addition to that, um, uh, the um, uh, Albert Beach water plant generator and the uh, and a potential police building. Uh, the idea there is to try and uh, and get some some estimates, some uh, some proposals uh, uh, to bring to the table for discussion when these matters arise. So we're uh, most of our uh, our contractors are waiting till things uh, uh, thaw out before they're prepared to meet me at any of our of our sites. So I hope to have a, a little more aggressive report to next month. Any questions for Graham? Okay, thank you very much, Erwin. Doctor, a member of our committee has been in continuing conversations with Dr. Martin Barnes. Um, concerning the, the potential for operating in the summertime. Uh, Dr. Martin Barnes is, is very concerned about the situation specifically with respect to the, uh, the COVID-19 variants of concern. Uh, she's just not sure how that's going to impact on uh, her ability to, to manage the, the clinic. Um, obviously, we're gonna be continuing a dialogue with Dr. Martin Barnes and uh, we will, uh, in time, make a decision. Uh, you know, it, it's it's just way too up in the air right now to to draw any strong conclusions, either positive or negative. Right. Yeah, I wouldn't want to be a a physician right now on any level. My goodness. Okay. Um, thank you. Communications, Steve or Mike. Anything to report? Um. The, what I was going to mention is uh, that is over in Heritage and Trails, so um, there's nothing for me right now. Okay. All right. Uh, information office, there's no report. Oh, all three staff members are coming back. Oh, excellent. Great. That's good to hear. Good. That's great. Um, so moving on to building inspector Graham. Um, the building inspector, uh, the uh, uh, report that I've received from uh, uh, Curtis Bodwin, um, a surprising amount of activity. There's been two main permits, one sunroom, one garage, one bunkhouse, one addition. Value of permits, $496,000, and the permit fees, $5,301. Uh, so uh, we're off to really quite a busy start for the new year. And uh, thank you, uh, Curtis, for submitting this to us. Okay. Any questions? Okay. Accessibility. Um, 
uh, I've heard from the Municipal Leader magazine, which we get, there's one here on the table, and they want to put in an article about accessibility, and they've asked if they could use our information from our award. So I've updated it a bit, and um, I just have a couple emails from them I see today to review it. So that's nice. And the Accessibility Issues Office also wants to use it in their marketing and promotional material, some of our information. So um, I think that's a great idea. Uh, any questions? Okay, thanks. Heritage Steve. Um, right now, the biggest thing with the heritage, as I've been mentioning previously, is um, just the overwhelming amount of information that there was uh, at the beginning um, of get, of starting all of this. Uh, so um, the the biggest delay was really trying to wait for the website because that was going to be the easiest way that we could compile all the information in a um, in a way that wasn't going to overload everyone. Um, so that information uh, has been sent over to um the uh, website developer so hopefully we should be able to get that uh, up and running um fairly shortly which would mean that people uh, would be able to submit their stories and um if they have anything that they would like to put into the record um like any kind of artifacts there then they would be able to do that but register ahead of time so then that way it doesn't require somebody to go house to house and compile all that information and work with hard copies um, so hopefully we should be able to get that up and running um, as soon as possible. The biggest thing right now is, of course, the office is overloaded, so it's just, it's going to take a little bit of time. But at the very least, the website's done, so um, hopefully it's uh, coming up pretty soon. Uh, sorry, Steve. Just just to clarify, um, the uh, the developer they're not handling content. Content will be handled uh, by the Winnipeg office. No, um, so I was I was speaking to Lynn, and because uh, because they um, of course are overloaded right now, then um, a lot of heritage sites um, have been done around Manitoba. So uh, Allnet is familiar with how a lot of these go, and and they know how to compile a database really quick. So the idea is that we're basically just copying them pasting into uh, into the website so uh, th uh, there was just going to be some communication with them see how uh, see how other people have done it and then I was going to put it forward to uh, all of you to say yeah or nay there will be a cost involved will there not um, yeah there'll, there'll have to be an estimate but again that's that'll, that'll come up to uh, everybody and just say yeah or nay Thank you. But just just for clarification, um, after uh, after this council is uh, is is done, and I guess what do we have left now about a year or so, um, then the next council uh, councilor who would take it over can just simply access the information uh, freely. So it's not um, it's not dependent on me continuing. I mean, everything will be right there and uh, and be nicely organized. Oh, okay. Thank you. Uh, trails. Um, very, very similar, um, and uh, essentially just uh, waiting for that information to uh, to come in. Um, the ski trails, uh, the uh, freezing cold is not good for them. <laughs> uh, the, <laughs> um, there, there's a limit as to uh, what snow can, uh, can can take and where it becomes very rigid. Um, but they've been they have been grooming when they're able to, um, and as uh, as I mentioned previously, they uh, have superseded their donations. In fact, they superseded their donations almost immediately at the beginning of the year. Um, so uh, at, th at this point, with trails uh, with the uh, cross country uh, uh, ski trail system, it's more of a, a matter of how do you. Uh, how do you manage the flood of um, people who are interested in, in, in using the system? Um, oh. Past that, there's really nothing to report. Thank you. Any questions for Steve? Okay. Thank you very much. Um, oh, and uh, just sorry, uh, Erwin, uh, this just came in um, that uh, the fire department has been able to. Uh, has has been able to work with uh, the uh, the younger members. They're still training the older members as to how to use the program. Um, but yes, they have been able to use the uh, uh, the training software uh, during COVID. Good stuff. Yeah. Thank you very much, Steve. I'll give a brief report on my Red River Basin Commission. I guess it's sort of a committee. Um, the report of the Red River Basin met virtually last week to review the Net Medieval Marsh project, and we're still waiting for some final approvals from a couple organizations. 
um, it has to do with building shelf islands in the Netley Marsh area that will mimic natural growth and it will encourage and enhance nature's natural filters in the wetland. Uh, this has been done in Louisiana with great success, managing it a different climate in Louisiana, <laughs> but it, it, it did work well and they're in touch with the people in Louisiana. We hope to maybe, maybe bring them on for a webinar or something at some point. Mm -hmm. um, this group also hosts an annual fish dinner, which sells out every year. It's approximately 300 people. Last year we had to cancel, usually on Water Day, which is March 20th, 19th, something like that. Well, COVID hit with a bang. Mm -hmm. So we canceled last year and we have not, we're not doing it this year again, but they are going to have an online auction. So we're encouraging interested individuals to look at the online auction and perhaps participate that way. And those funds go towards education and, and smaller projects in the basin. Do you have dates for the auction? Uh, I will send that information to council when I get it. I don't have it yet. They have to apply for special online licenses and all that kind of stuff. It's very uh, time consuming. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so that's my update on Red River Basin Commission. All right, so nothing else on our committee reports, gentlemen? Right. Be it resolved, the February committee reports be accepted as presented. May I have a mover? Mike, thank you. Second, Steve, thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Carried. Thank you very much. Moving on to accounts and finances. Be it resolved, the following list of accounts be approved for payment. Accounts payable checks 9030 to 9073, the amount of 74000 $669.79 and February 5th payroll in the amount of $30,154.18. May I have a mover, Erwin? Thank you. And second, Mike, thank you. And discussion, Erwin. I have reviewed the list of accounts. Uh, the only unusual item was uh, we had to pay for uh, the auto pack renewal for a fleet of vehicles and that amounted to $15,766. Uh, the remainder of the payables are routine and are, are in, in line. Thank you. Were rebates applicable to uh, to commercial vehicles? We did get a rebate. Okay. Okay. okay, thank you. Not the same way as uh, Yeah, yeah. Okay. Long so A commercial fleet is rated uh, based on dollars and claims and if you if you uh, have less claims than than a certain number then they'll actually pay you a rebate you it is also subject to a charge if you have more claims uh, than normal so it works both ways thanks everyone thank you all right um no further discussion on the accounts all those in favor Aye. Gary, thank you no business arising, moving on to other business. Bylaw 1614, regulating ORVs, second reading, be it resolved that bylaw 1614, regulating use of off-road vehicles in the municipality as amended, be given a second reading. May I have a mover? Mike, I'll thank you, right. second. Graham, can you second it? Mike, beat you to the punch. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes I'd like to second it. Thank you. Uh, discussion. Uh, just very quickly, I would like to thank um, everybody who uh, who emailed council. Uh, we appreciate your your interest. Uh, appreciate your interest in this. Uh, I'd also like to thank uh, my fellow council members and and Raymond, who I've had uh, conversations with. And uh, as a council, your job is to enact bylaws. And uh, as a police force, it's your job to enforce those bylaws. And the amend some of the amendments that uh, that I suggested, I think, started to cross over into the enforcement side, and probably reached a little bit too far, which is probably why we got a little bit of pushback. So uh, that's on me, and uh, I certainly, I certainly take uh, certainly understand the angst that it may have caused. Um, but before voting in favor of 1614, I would like to make it uh, very clear. Uh, that in no way were the amendments 
uh, meant to open up the RM Victoria Beach to ORVs. As a matter of fact, it was quite the opposite. The intent was to put even further restrictions to enhance the enforceability of the ORV Act. Um, our police do a good job enforcing our laws and provincial laws, and I will support 1614, and I'll leave it to our capable police to handle the enforcement. I'd just like to echo Mike's uh, comments. I think, you know, the feedback that we got is, is a strong indicator of uh, a very intense level of interest in community affairs. Um, you know, our residents spoke up, we listened. Uh, it became more and more obvious that uh, uh, additional regulations were going to be difficult to enforce uh, uh, given our limited uh, enforcement capabilities. Our police force to do a marvelous job with, with the assets they have. And it became obvious to me after some lengthy discussions with a number of our residents that uh, 1614 has, uh, was uh, potentially to be amended uh, was not going to improve that situation. By the way, the, the amendment never did see the council table. It was only in discussion. Right. Correct. Thank you, Ron. Graham? I'm, uh, I have no hesitation in uh, supporting uh, uh, 1614. You recall that uh, first reading passed unanimously. And the, um, uh, the operative phrase, the, uh, the, uh, the understanding that makes it all work for all of us is that uh, uh, the enforcement will continue to be uh, governed by police discretion. It's worked for many years and there's no reason why it won't uh, continue to work. And I appreciate the, uh, uh, the email, the input uh, uh, that we got and I'm uh, uh, happy, to, uh, happy to support this this uh, second reading. Thank you. Steve, did you want to weigh in? or uh, okay. I'd just like to, for the residents who are who have written in, we've received well over 100 emails. We have not received hundreds, as was reported in one, uh, uh, one post, but we have received over 100. And I've tried to answer most of them. I know other council members have as well. Um, some people have asked that we record their, their uh, objection or their email in the minutes. We don't do that. We don't record people's names in the minutes. We try to avoid naming residents. Um, I just wanted people to know that. And I also, there's been some chatter about the snowmobile clubs. And I just want to make it very clear that the snow drifters and the Bel Air ATV club work very hard in and around our community. They educate, they groom, they maintain, they look after these trails um, and it costs them time and money. They encourage people to join their groups. They encourage family friendly, safe, uh, all ORV activities. Mm -hmm. And I'm sure that, that should we need to reach out to them again, they would be more than willing to help us in certain ways. But this is not at all a reflection or, or uh, anything disparaging about either of these two clubs who work really hard in our community. And many of our community members are members of these clubs. Um, there's also been some chatter about using the Victoria Beach Community Center as a staging or launching area. We, the municipality, does not own a club. So if anyone thinks that they should be staging there or would like to stage there, you must talk to the board of the Victoria Beach Community Center and ask their permission. You know, there would be some extra work for them if they all of a sudden had a bunch of people staging or launching there. So I just want people to know that if you want to use their area, you must please get in touch with them. We can't give you that permission or authority. I appreciate there's going to be a safety issue there as well. Because sure. in the winter, this time of year, the community center really is the hub of activity in the RM with the Toboggan Hill yeah. skating rink trails. Yeah, so yeah, so it forth. is busy. So, yeah. uh, and, and this bylaw 
while it's had its ups and downs, does apply to the entire municipality. It is not just a vehicle restricted area issue, although I understand the, the concerns, but it, it is an entire municipality issue. So having said all that, is there anything you'd like to add, Raymond, or no? Okay. All right, gentlemen, on that note, uh, may I have a, I have a mover and a seconder. May I have a show of hands for second reading of bylaw 1614, all those in favor? Carried, thank you very much. Be it resolved that bylaw 1614 regulating the use of off-road vehicles in the municipality is amended, be given third reading and passed. May I have a mover? Okay, Steve, thank you. Graham, will you second? Thank you. Little way. <laughs> Any further discussion on bylaw 1614 third reading? Nope. All right. All those in favor, this is a recorded vote for a third and final reading. So all those in favor? Aye. Carried unanimously. Thank you, gentlemen. I guess no one is opposed. Thank you, everyone. Moving on. Be it resolved that bylaw 1615, establishing fees for tax certificates and zoning memorandums be given first reading. May I have a mover for that motion, please? Steve, thank you. Seconder, Irwin, thank you. Discussion? Um, okay. Raymond, is the, is the fee that you note here in keeping with the cost of a, of a tax certificate and other well, jurisdictions, the, you know? The present fees were, ch were last changed in 2002, I believe. So <laughs> they've been stuck at that same amount for almost 20 years. Okay. So it was time to increase them. Basically, we're doubling them from $20 per to $40 per, which is, I think it's more or less the going rate of what other municipalities would charge for either a tax certificate or a zoning. And okay. it's a council decision at all times. Anyways, you mm -hmm. decide what's a fair rate. So, okay. Any other comments? It sounds reasonable to bring it up to uh, a, a, a comparable level with other municipalities. It's probably overdue to be uh, polished up. It looks okay to me. All right. actually, actually, sorry, um, I just have one quick question. Um, does this cover all the uh, RM costs? There, we're not um, we're not shorting ourselves. No, I think we cover the cost. Is basically we just in terms of uh, issuing those documents. So it's it's basically admin uh, admin time. Okay. And I mean, it doesn't take an hour to do a zoning memorandum or a tax certificate. It's you know 15, 20 minutes maybe. Yeah. It it, it certainly covers our costs. Okay. Very good. Good questions. Any other discussion? All those in favor? All right. Carrie, thank you, gentlemen. Yeah, I can I can delegate other people to do it. Yeah. Other than yeah. All right. Thank you very much. Non be it resolved, the arm of Victoria Beach Council authorizes CAO to write a letter in support of the Victoria Beach Club's Victoria Beach Tennis Capital Campaign Committee Building Sustainable Communities Program grant application to renovate the tennis facilities. May I have a mover? Steve, thank you. Second? Mike, thank you. Discussion? Anything that supports and supports physical activity, I'm in favor of. I've seen the plans and uh, wow, what a showpiece. Yeah. It looks they've, great. They've done their due diligence. They've done engineering work. They've, uh, they're have they doing a major fundraising campaign. It'll be, you know, I, I play on those courts not well, but I play on them and they look fine to me. But but, uh, you know, they are 40 or older, 40 years older, older. So I guess they were out. Yeah, both courts are 
way above my level of proficiency in the game of tennis. So I mm -hmm. won't even I won't even try it with anyone's all safe for people to know what they're doing. They're well used and they're well loved. Well, tennis has been an institution at uh, Victoria Beach for, for many, many years. So I, um, um, our letter of uh, support uh, is, uh, if it helps, uh, and it looks like it will, then I'm all in favor of it. The first tennis, tennis court was on the golf course. Oh. Hmm. Yeah, and then it moved. I'm not sure of the timing, but then it moved. I've got the movement because somebody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's where the reason was. All right. So any further discussion on this letter of support? Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Very, thank you. Construction of records. This is an annual event. Whereas subsection 262 brackets one of the Municipal Act provides as follows. A council must retain municipal records for at least the minimum retention period specified in the regulations. And whereas regulation 53-97 of the Municipal Act specifies the types of municipal records that must be retained and that may be destroyed. Therefore be it resolved that the Chief Administrator's Officer be authorized to destroy the documents and records of the municipality in accordance with the Municipal Act Regulation 5397, as described on attached Schedule A, dated February 16, 2021. And Schedule A outlines what can be destroyed. Mm. And so may I have a mover? Steve, thank you. Second. Michael, second, thank you. Good. So, Raymond, is there anything you want to add or you know the schedule is um in compliance with the regulation 53-97 we're not destroying any records that don't fall within the parameters of the regulation we use a commercial company to shred mm -hmm. the documents yeah. on the and it's a, it's a standard uh, housekeeping matter uh, every year about this time so this is consistent with uh, past practice yeah, and Mike asked what type of documents, well, like correspondence, resolutions, um, bank statements, customer receipts, those types of items. That's right after they get made. Yeah, it should be right after. Right after. Um, okay. It, the issue is that it becomes a matter of we don't have the space anymore yeah. to keep documents. It and starts to get expensive. Yeah. Yeah. Is anything retained electronically? That gets yeah, there, there are things retained electronically, okay. and there are things that we have to retain yeah. Yeah, in perpetuity. Sure. Mm -hmm. so, okay. Um, you know, tax statements, those kinds of things are much easier to store now because they're they were originally CDs, and you can right. store them on a stick, and so they don't take much space, and yet you can store many, many years of information. Like things like a resolution, once council approves the minutes, you've already confirmed that mm -hmm. the mover and the second are accurate and that the resolution is accurate. So right. okay. keep uh, actual resolutions for years on end doesn't make any sense. Is that what the boxes are for? Uh, yes, yes, that would be for the reason the because they come in with uh, some sort of bin. We have a truck on site and it just goes right into the shred. Yeah, there's no risk of papers <laughs> flying around. <laughs> Thanks, Raymond. Okay. Any further discussion, gentlemen? No. All those in favor? Aye. Great. Thank you. Plow truck. Be it resolved that the arm of Victoria Beach Council authorized the purchase of the following equipment from MAK Construction and Landscaping Limited. 2008 GMC Top Kick C5500 flat deck truck 4x4, $17,325. A used Boss DXP V Plow 10 foot snow blade for $10,500. And a used Western Icebreaker 3 yard sander for $3,150. All about prices include the applicable GST. May I have a mover? Steve, Mike, second. Thank you. Discussion? This is replacing a truck that is 11 years older, and uh, Dylan is, uh, is starting to find it more and more difficult to find parts, if parts are even uh, accessible anymore. 
for the 97 by taking a lot of the heavy labor off of the off of the existing truck uh, we could we, we could be able to squeeze a few more years of service out of it with some duties but uh, this truck is is ready for that v plow and, and the sander uh, and the plan is to take the uh, the flat deck off and put the box uh, from the from the older truck uh, onto the onto the new truck uh, so that uh, if I remember correctly that's what it is. and uh, yeah. it's a good price for that truck too yeah go ahead Grant yeah um, Erwin. no go ahead Graham Okay, and uh, we'll uh, uh, retain and continue to register the old truck uh, as a as a standby unit until it's uh, just not worth it anymore. I, I ask because there's been years gone by where we continue to register uh, uh, vehicles that were deemed uh, 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 surplus or not worth operating. Um, there is some use for the old truck to justify continuing to register. I believe there is enough use. Otherwise. Uh... They probably would. Uh, they probably would look at uh, salvage value. Okay. Thank you. Quick question, Mike. Uh, the new unit has it been safetyed? Yes, yes. It it's safety. it's safetyed, yeah. uh, and there were uh, and as a result of the safety, there were a couple of things that had to be repaired on the truck. Uh, the seller is responsible for the repairs, and uh, once once uh, the safety requirements have been have been completed. Uh, I expect that the truck will be uh, delivered to us if not already done so. We'll, we'll pick it up. Well, we'll, 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 we'll pick it up uh, Friday or something. And both uh, Trevor took Dylan with him, and mm -hmm. then when they went looked at, so it's been looked over by both the guys. So yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it is diesel. Yeah. Diesel. So. Yeah, and it's a diesel too. Yeah. yeah. So it looks so much, more, oh, yeah. much more durable, even in these freezing cold temperatures. Well, but most of our vehicles are diesel. Most of our equipment our is equipment, diesel. Yeah. Say. Right. Okay. The diesel needs a wet ride all day. Really? Mm -hmm. And you can put it indoors. You can put it indoors. You, you could right. put it indoors. Yeah. But that's why that's why semis, uh, if you've ever if you've, if you if you if you've ever stopped at one of those roadside motels, uh, and if there's a if there's a semi park there. It runs all right. night because it's it's cheaper for that thing to run all night and keep it warm than to go through if you can uh, any kind of startup. Uh, okay. Thank you. Any other questions? All those in favor? Aye. Great. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, correspondence. Right. <laughs> <laughs> well, there there was correspondence. I believe I sort of addressed that. Yeah. There was over yeah. 100 emails yeah. from concerned and, and um, interested individuals, which we appreciate and think we'll make sure we answer them all. Uh, but was there anything other than ORB correspondence? Anyone? No. Other Absolutely. Would be appropriate if I could give a, a very short report on the AMM insurance program uh, oh. meeting that I attended. I forgot to add that at the beginning. I'm sorry. No worries. Go ahead. Um, February 11th, uh, I, I attended virtually uh, a meeting put on by the AMM and our current insurer. I think it's fair to say that the AMM program has been reviewed by several of our peers and it is considered to be best of class in Canada. Commercial insurance rates in Canada are spiking. Um, I won't get into the details, but it's not unusual to have 30, 40, 50, or even 100% increase. Uh, the renewal terms for the, this year have not been finalized, but the president of Western Financial is optimistic that it will come in around 10%, which is absolutely fantastic. So it's, uh, you know, AMM and Western Financial do an outstanding job managing uh, the, uh, the association's uh, commercial program. Uh, as, a, as a longtime commercial insurance broker, you know, I believe it's important to recognize excellence and uh, AMM and Western Financial do one heck of a good job. 
Is part of it because of the sheer numbers of municipalities participating that they, they provide such good service? Um, the program is actually unique. Um, it, it does not follow traditional insurance techniques. The program was developed by a man by the name of Art Elias, who was uh, brilliant at uh, designing uh, group insurance programs. Almost all of the municipalities in Manitoba belong to the, the program. And because of the, the volume uh, purchasing power of the, of the municipalities, they're able to lot, create a large loss pool, which means that um, our program has a $4 million deductible. The association has over $11 million sitting in a reserve account. And that means that uh, the, the claims are paid uh, and any surplus that's left, this year it's expected there may be as much as a $5 million surplus. And instead of that money going to the insurance company, it stays within the association. Uh, it's a brilliant way to manage a, a group risk. I heard you say I heard you say four million dollar deductible. That is correct. Uh, so, so could, could you clarify that? Like, is that deductible from policyholders? <laughs> No wonder it's doing so well. No one would ever make a claim. <laughs> oh, claims under that level are administered by Western Financial. Claims are, are paid in a normal way, but up the first $4 million of, of any claim comes out of the reserve account, which is owned oh. by the association. Right. Okay. Uh, the association then buys what's called excess insurance. So if we had a, a $20 million loss, on a big building uh, or a, you know a, a, like a catastrophe loss like happened in Fort McMurray uh, then our the association's exposure is limited to the four million dollars per claim and the excess would pick up the uh, the remainder okay thanks very much four million dollars <laughs> <laughs> okay. we lose a lot of assets before it's worth our while it's not everything yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you very much, Erwin. Any thank you, Erwin. further comments or correspondence discussion? All right. All right, then. Be it resolved that the February 16th, 2021 regular council meeting be adjourned. Our next regular council meeting is to be held on March 2nd, 2021 at 6 p.m. here at 705 1661 Portage Avenue. Yeah, I have a mover. I'll move that. Graham, thank you. Steve, do you want to second that? Thank you. Any discussion? All those in favor? All right. <laughs> thank you, gentlemen. That is a wrap.